welcome to St. Andrews. Thank you all for coming to what I believe to be our first Philosophy of Physics conference. And this is St. Andrews' 600th anniversary, which is why I thought it was high time that we should have one. <laughs> of course, once upon a time, physics was a part of natural philosophy, and students of physics were trained in philosophical texts and forms of argumentation. They were men of letters as well as numbers. But, if I may venture an opinion of my own before I turn you over to our excellent speakers, we are passing through an age of rigid specialization, fragmentation, and anti-intellectualism, and some of us believe that this is bad for physics, that this could be a hindrance to the progress of physics, and that this is certainly a problem for the interpretation of physics. A case in point, when certain prominent physicists, which will remain unnamed, can sow such consummate confusion about the nature of reality that everything supposedly came out of literally nothing, for example, or evince such contempt for and ignorance of the state of philosophy that is supposedly dead, for example, and imagine that technical expertise in modern physics somehow legitimizes such claims, it is clear that something has gone horribly wrong with our education. This is why I think interdisciplinary conferences of this kind are important. On the other hand, it also seems to me, if I may venture one more opinion, that the physicist has some just complaints to make against some of our modern philosophers, who often seem determined to supervene everything upon, or reduce everything to, a picture of the world that is a residue of classical physics, which is antiquated physics. A picture consisting of pellets set in motion, a metaphysic, I would suggest, that is neither intuitive, commonsensical, or supported by modern physics, in fact. And again, this is another reason why I think interdisciplinary conferences of this kind are important. But you haven't come to hear my opinions, not yet, perhaps in five or ten years. <laughs> Today, you will be hearing from and talking to some well-seasoned philosophers and physicists from the United Kingdom and from the United States. Before we begin, however, I have a few announcements. First, I'm sorry to say we have had a recent cancellation, and we've had some last-minute but insuperable bureaucratic problems. And this means that Brian Pitt's talk will not be taking place, and that the open panel discussion, which was to have happened this evening, will take place in the afternoon. The conference will finish at 6. We will not be meeting again in the evening. However, the program is intense, and I think you might just appreciate having the evening off. I've also had a phone call from Professor James Ladyman, who has missed his flight and will be late coming, so he will swap his times with uh, Dr. William Lane Craig. But we may have to adjust the times a little so that uh, we, can, we can hear him and not miss anything he has to say. So I'll keep you posted as the day develops. But let me hand you over now to our leading chairman today, Raymond Tallis, a philosopher, cultural critic, retired medical doctor, and public intellectual, a gentleman, if I may say so, who has successfully resisted the zeitgeist of rigid specialism and acquired a mind in the process. We are very happy to have you with us today, Ray. 